It's another KSO show, a post-KSO show after a K-State victory. They're 2-0 and after beating the Southern Illinois Salukis 31-23 to in Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Uh, you know, <laughs> a lot to unpack with this game. Um, it should be more positives when it comes to talking about a victory in the Wildcat. Uh, the Wildcats getting a victory over SIU, but when you only – beat them by seven points, and you also have your starting quarterback go down in a scary non-contact injury uh, midway through the second quarter. Um, and then the backup just doesn't look very sharp a lot of the game um, in Will Howard. It does raise a lot of questions. So, But, you know, we, we're here to talk about it. It's KSO, it's the KSO show, and it's the post show, which means we bring in Nelly. And also KSU underscore fan who's not with us at this moment. Uh, we hope he joins us while Nelly and I are conversing um, about this game. And then when fan gets in here, he'll bring you even more numbers. But Nelly, he's got numbers for you. He's got analytics for you. Um, and, and he's a great dude. So how you doing, Nelly? Excited to talk to you. Do wish I could be talking to you about a blowout Kansas State victory over Southern Illinois with a healthy Skylar Thompson. Me too, Flando. Me too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm still a little down. You know, I told you before we got on. If if as we sat here, I knew Skylar Thompson was still healthy, I'd be pretty darn jacked because most likely we'd be coming off a blowout win over Southern Illinois, a fairly dominating win over a Stanford team who just went on the road and and handled a ranked USC team. So I, I'd be pretty darn excited about the rest of the season. But instead, I'm a little down, trying to trying to find the optimism again. Well, we'll be able to watch the Chiefs today. We're both Chiefs fans, and um, that'll be fun to see. But, yes, for K-State, um, things aren't looking great at the moment, but they, it's, they're 2-0, and still haven't lost a game. There still could be a lot of hope. We don't know what's happening with Skylar's injury. We have some insight on that. If you want to know more, go to KSO, check the message boards. Um, we'll try to keep you up to date on what's happening with Skylar Thompson um, as, you know, we get info and stuff that it comes in that D.Y., you know, keeps up with, and we just try to keep pumping out um, with all the great people that we talk to. So um, let's jump into this game, and then we can talk big picture throughout the game as well as, well, I mean, after the game mostly, but, you know, talk about uh, just the game, and I want to let you, Nelly, go through some numbers and such, but let's mostly go through the scoring plays. I don't want to keep you guys, you know, as long as I did last time. Um, and that first play, or that first drive was a touchdown for Kansas State. Six plays, you know, um, they ended up getting down there and having a really good drive. Skylar Thompson, great pass to Bleak Knowles, 43 yards. Um, talk about that play to start, Nelly. I mean, after Deuce Vaughn set him up with a nice run, a 10-yard run to get things going, things are pumping, moving right along. Uh, that next play, Skylar Thompson finds Malik Bulls 43 yards down the field. That's it's got to get your juices pumping. Oh, no doubt. And, you know, the thing that was most exciting about it probably was, um, you know, maybe the biggest uh, beef with Skylar's performance coming out of Stanford was his ability to throw the deep ball and, and him not being sharp in that area. And he comes out second play of the game and literally drops one in the bucket to Malik Knowles. So, yeah, like, all right, that, that's, what, that was, that's what was missing against Stanford. And we saw him do it. We know it's there. And so, yeah, certainly gave – I'm sure it gave him, gave Knowles and, and the fans a lot of confidence. And then Joe Irvin gets a nine-yard run. He And then another run uh, to get it to first down. Joe Irvin sometimes looks a lot like uh, Deuce Vaughn from way up top from where we were at. Just, you know, how he ran the quick – the speed and ability to uh, earn yards after contact. Um and then Deuce Vaughn finishes it off for a touchdown. So, you know, talk about, you know, some positives there with seeing just the running backs, both Irvin and Vaughn, especially Vaughn, obviously, showing out this game. Well, well, first with Irvin, I actually made a note that I made on that first drive that I thought Irvin showed more juice than, than we saw against Stanford. He he looked quick. He, he looked explosive. And, and yeah, that, that was good to see. And, and, yeah, obviously Wright didn't get any carries that, that first drive, but – he played well as as well, and yeah, you take out the, the fumble from Deuce, which 
I'll call it a fluke play. I mean, obviously it can't happen, but I think it was a fluke. I'm not concerned about him fumble, having fumbling issues. You know, he ran hard, ran tough, made a few great runs uh, as well. Um, so then, next drive, actually, we talk about the turnover K-State was able to force. K-State's defense played really well, even in the first half, without Daniel Green, who played really well against Stanford. He was out um, due to targeting late in that game during the first half. And the defense played pretty well until, like, one drive later that we'll get to. But that second drive was nice, two plays in, and Nick Baker is throwing a pick. That's one of the more incredible plays you'll ever see, I Still have no idea how Ryan Hennington didn't didn't keep or kept that ball from hitting the ground. I mean, it was on his fingertips, and he just flicked it up. And you know, live, I said, "There's no way this didn't hit the ground." But and even more mind blowing was the length of the review. I mean, it was Jeez. obvious that it didn't on the first replay. And uh, Kleiman was visibly frustrated, and I don't blame him because it was ridiculous it took that long. It was beautiful. Um, Ryan Hennington made what could be end up being one of the plays of the year, just the way that was incredible, incredible stuff from Hennington, just to tip that up. Jalen Pickle comes up, up with the interception, which put a smile to my face. Didn't expect him to uh, pick a ball off, and he, his big paws had the pig skin in hand after that insane play, but it didn't take long for Skylar Thompson to make his own mistake after the defense set him up pretty nice. What did you see on that play from Skylar? <laughs> Two things. Um, he threw it late, and he threw it well behind him. Um, you know, if he makes a good throw, him throwing it a little late probably doesn't hurt him because it's still a completion, but he, he threw it um, well behind Brooks as well. You know, it, yeah, wasn't a good throw. And you know, I don't want to <laughs> beat, beat on a man who's down, but, yeah, that, that certainly wasn't one of Skyler's best throws of his career. But then the defense, you know, picks up basically, you know, Gets the ball back, obviously, but the defense forces a three and out, um, and they punt back to K-State, and K-State and Skylar Thompson are able to get the ball back. This is in the second quarter, and this is when it gets a little teary-eyed for, for climbing because this drive is going so well. Irvin, uh, Jax gets the ball. Skylar to Jax. Skylar to Malik for 50 yards. Just, you know, the, the things are rolling. I mean, there's – there's um, Malik's 100 yards, basically, in two plays from Skyler. I mean, 98 yards. Um, and then Deuce Fawn, eight yards, and that's the play. De Deuce Fawn makes an incredible play. He reverses field after he realizes he stood up on the left side, tries to go back right, sees an opening. Skyler, the guy that he is, says, oh, I can go out and, you know, put a block and try to get him into the end zone. And it costs – the quarterback his his uh you know at least the next probably couple games yeah that that's what makes it even more gut-wrenching is if deuce wasn't as good as he is that doesn't happen <laughs> and please don't take that as me trying to blame deuce for the injury because i'm not doing that at all but any other normal running back goes down for a no yard or no gain or two yard loss plays over with and we're back in the huddle but Deuce's greatness kept the play alive, and Skyler's unselfishness led him to try to go through a block, which, which ultimately led to the injury. And I, I certainly don't blame Kleiman for having the reaction he did. It's a good thing he cares so deeply about his players. Um, if you want to look at it in isolation, though, I do think that reaction probably did have an impact, a negative impact on the team and, and in that moment, but, but certainly I – I can't blame him for reacting like, like that. No, I, I don't blame him either. In fact, it shows me I'd, ra I'd rather him do that than try to be stone cold. And, and because, man, yeah, that's gut wrenching. Um, no matter what, how you cut it, this guy has given this team everything, Skyler, and um, his career path, you know, having to battle with Alex Delton, you know, early in his career when he was healthy and he was probably the clear right option to, to trot out there every time um, in, in Snyder's last few seasons. And then, you know, Kleiman embraces Skylar Thompson with open arms, total confidence in his offense, as he should. Um, and Skylar's given the reins. He, you know, struggles against Arkansas State last year, 
defense was bad, but still beat Oklahoma later in the year and just did incredible things. Goes down with injury last year, and then it happens again this year. There's just no, there's nothing you can really do to um, make this one feel much better, unless you can say Skylar Thompson's miraculously healed. Because it's just that's how sad it is. He deserves it. This team deserves it, and it doesn't help. Will Howard comes into the game. Um, you know, and struggles later on that we'll get to. But it's funny because he comes into this game and the, and the offense and, and Kleiman and Messingham realize, oh, let's give him, get him some confidence. And they find a one-yard run to get him into the end zone on a second and goal. Yeah, and, and I was going to save some of these later or numbers for later, but ironically enough, um, you know, K-State's been under center 17 times so far in the season. Um, They've only thrown it three times and under center and ran it 14 times. And 13 of those 14 runs have been with running backs. So that QB sneak, which I love calling QB sneak on goal line situations or short yard situations, it's almost unstoppable. Um, but, yeah, that, that is the lone carry from a non-running back when K-State's been under center this year. And we'll, we'll get into more of that here in a bit. I love it. And then the next drive, um, the Salukis, they go down. Uh, get down to the K-State 21, and the defense does a good job of stopping them on a third and two, forcing a fourth and one, and Southern Illinois takes the field goal in which they do drill that one to make it um, a two-touchdown game, 14-3 to three at that point. K-State then gets the ball back again, 10 plays. This gets, gets me going, gets me thinking, oh, okay. K-State might just be okay. They know what they're doing. They've been prepared. Will Howard's been prepared. He's been talked up, been hyped up. Uh, Mess knows what he needs to call to uh, make Will Howard perform better than, um, you know, he, he probably needs a different play call, playbook than what he, uh, Skylar Thompson was given. He trusted him throughout times. That first drive went well. Will Howard made a bunch of nice reads, some nice runs, and then a couple of really nice reads to Deuce Vaughn, especially later in the drive that set up the easy touchdown for, for Deuce. Yeah, a couple of key plays there. Obviously, the third down, third and long completion uh, to Landry Weber. Yep. Um, you know, easily. Well, it's interesting. That was huge. At, at about as Howard was in between, he starts his first series of the game, first real series. I know it wasn't his, you know, he came and had the series for the QB sneak, but first. <laughs> You know, true series comes in on third and 15, throws a dart to Landry Weber. And then the last series of the game, he finds Phillip Brooks over the middle on, on third and long. So interesting that the first and last drives, he both made two really good throws in between was a, a lot of bad. But, but back to that drive and back to Landry Weber, you know, his only other catch of that game was a fourth down conversion. And he, he's a guy who hasn't had a lot of catches in, in his career, but it feels like every time he does have a catch, it's, it's been big. Um, a couple plays later in that drive, uh, Deuce Vaughn broke to the outside, and I got to give credit to Nick Linners. Um, he stayed engaged. Not only did he stay engaged on his block, but he he didn't didn't hold. And that's a play where the that play is designed to go inside, and the running back cuts outside. That it's very easy as a blocker to hold the guy. And so not only did he stay engaged and keep his block, he did it without holding. And then on one of Will Howard's running plays. I couldn't catch it on the TV. I believe it's either Warner or, or Weber had a really, really good uh, downfield block um, for, for Howard to let him get a few extra yards. Hey, I'm glad you pointed out Landry. Obviously, you had to on that drive. Landry, I think, Landry Weber's a guy that should not be understated um, and is a guy that I think is going to make some plays for this team this year, especially if him and Will Howard can find a connection if Howard continues to be – the guy under center, um, but uh, Weber has some decent, you know, some nice athleticism, some nice hands, and gives you, um, I think, a dude that can be a, a consistent pass catcher for um, Howard. Everyone has to be. That's the thing. Last year, he didn't really have anyone consistent, but he also wasn't consistent himself. So it just makes everything hard when the quarterback isn't playing up to standards every single play. Um, Mr. Cardia Wright had a, had a nice little run that play, uh, Christian, uh, why am I, why am I missing his name? Who's the guy that sprung Deuce Vaughn? 
uh, Christian Moore. Christian oh. Moore. Yeah, Christian yeah. Moore. You know, he was in there for that play. It actually wasn't a really good block. He almost looked like he did hold him. But it's cool to see Christian Morgan in there. Um, and interesting to see that, you know, made me think that maybe he's in there during practice a lot when Will Howard's in there. But also could prove that Christian Moore might be one of the next guys up after Jax. Yeah, actually, I was I was very surprised when, when he entered the game and, and had forgot about it, actually, until so, so you brought it back up. Okay, so then let's move on to um, – the next drive where the Salukis go down and, and score a touchdown. Um, it was a nine play 75 yard drive. This was when the defense did start to uh, waver a little bit, you know, I mean, a lot of it on this drive, you know, it started to get fatigued, especially still without Daniel green in this first half. Um, and it showed, but one thing I will say about that drive, it showed me that, Sincere Mason could hit, but overall, it wasn't a great defensive possession. No, and, and um, ironically enough, you know, all the buzz in the offseason was about Julius Brent, and I'm not saying he's been bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly that's the guy who, who teams have targeted way more than Echo to this point, and you know, he gave um, he gave up a, a few plays on, on this on this draft specifically. I think there was a seam route that he got beat on. And then they came back to a hitch route on that on that side of the field. So certainly, I think the, the middle of the field on those seam routes will will continue to be a concern for for the K State defensive staff. And yeah, you you said it as as important as Skyler appears to be on the offense offensive side of the ball. Daniel Green may be almost that important on the defensive side of the ball. You know, they're and obviously other guys stepped up third game in the second half as well. But you know, they're noticeably different with him on the field and without him on the field. No doubt about that, um, and that definitely showed once we do get to the second half. Uh, the, the next drive, I believe this is the uh, the fumble from from Will Howard. Or no, no, this is the, I'm sorry, the Deuce Vaughn fumble. Yeah, it really changed things. I do believe um, first Deuce Vaughn fumble of his K State career. Prides himself on not fumbling. Said it after the game. You know, um, and still had an amazing game, really, when you looked at the numbers for, for him. I mean, for his standards, though, could have been better. And that fumble kind of changed things, didn't it? Yeah, it certainly did change momentum. You know, after they – after Southern Illinois put together a long drive, um, certainly even if you're not able to put points on the board as an offense, you at least want to get a couple first downs, get the defense a chance to catch their breath, regroup. I make adjustments on the sideline, and yeah, the worst thing you can do is turn it over on the very first play, and and that's what happened. It sure did, and then um, that's when you know it set up the Salukis. They took advantage. They were able to quickly punch that one into the end zone. Obviously, got set up right there uh, for a first and goal as they as they got the ball at the K State nine yard line. Um, and that's when the game was getting a little, a little close, a little scary, a little 21-16 action. Not what you want to see at that point, especially with Skyler Thompson out. Things are not looking good, um, but you're still kind of thinking, oh, Will Howard had that nice first drive, um, but he comes back out after that rare deuce fumble and throws uh, a pick six, a 41-yard pick six. Yeah, and I, yeah, I'm not sure, yeah, why he got so rattled personally after that that deuce fumble, but certainly it felt like the pressure of the game got to him at that point, and he was never the same player after that until that throw to Philip Brooks. But you know, he yeah, that was airmailed by a good five or ten yards, and he had a couple throws later in the game that. Is actually a good thing that he overthrew him that badly, or it could have been possibly pick sixes again, and and after that, and and understandably so. I mean, K State's offense and the play calling went into a shell and got ultra conservative. And you know, I I can't blame the the staff for going with that approach after seeing what they were seeing. You know, I, that probably was was the right approach. They they couldn't have Will Howard lose them the game. Then the next drive, try to get Will Howard going again to create it or. First, first snap goes to Wright on an eight-yard run, who 
I thought played well in his limited time. Um, then Will Howard found Deuce Vaughn over the middle of the field. Then Malik Knowles for 11 yards. Will Howard passing complete, you know, a couple more incompletions. But they do end up getting down to the Saluki's 36. But then Will Howard sacked and drops the ball, and it's fumbled, and it's another turnover. And now things are really looking worrisome as uh, K-State is down 23-21 to 21 after that, it, that pick six from the series prior. It's crazy how quick it happened. I mean, going from up 21-3 and complete control of the game, thinking, all right, this we're going to roll like we should, and bam, <laughs> blink of an eye, you're down. And yeah, on the play that, that Howard fumbled, Noah Johnson got beat up the middle, um, which which kind of was the first set of dominoes to fall, and then Will Howard did not protect the ball. Um, but going back to the to the diamond formation, like, you know, that's a formation K-State's had a lot of success with going back to their very first year. You know, you think back to the game against Oklahoma at home, they actually gashed them with that diamond formation. So, I'd expect that to be a fairly, um, you know, a play a prominent role in the package moving forward. And it'll be interesting to see what they can, what plays they can develop off of that look. You know, we've, we've seen the outside stretch runs out of that a lot. We've seen Will Howard or Skylar Thompson pull it and keep it um, and run the, uh, run the read off of that. So what, what else can they design out of that package to keep defensive off, defensives off balance? And then to end the half, you know, the defense really – ends it on a, a really high note because Khalid Duke, you know, gets past his defender rather easily on a really nice move, a really, you know, subtle move too, um, to get around the tackle and sack the quarterback and, and send us to halftime. But, I mean, just talk about how – were you impressed with that defensive performance, especially considering Green is not out there in the first half? Yeah, you, you take away the one really long drive, and the defense did play fairly well, fairly well even in the first half. Um, with giving up 23, obviously the offense played a, a big role in, in those 23 points. Um, and, and back to Duke, you know, one of the observations I made after the first game, not necessarily that this was a negative, it was just interesting to see how they would use him moving forward, is on first and second down when K-State was in their three-man front, he lined up a lot at linebacker and was dropping back in pass coverage versus rushing the passer. Again, not saying that was a bad thing. Obviously, they played very well against Stanford. But I thought yesterday, and I didn't haven't charted it to see, you know, how many plays he was lined up at DN versus backer. But I felt like on first and second down, he was lined up at DN last night much more than he was against Stanford. So that'll be just interesting to watch moving forward is how they use him. And that could be game to game and game plan game plan specific possibly it would make sense yeah I mean in that scenario it is interesting you say that and off the top of my head what I think of is against Stanford they realized pretty quickly these quarterbacks aren't great throwing down the field um but they get it out of their hands quickly enough might as well drop drop a guy back and try to make him make mistakes but I do like Cully Duke rushing the passer and especially in these scenarios where they do think Nick Baker is a decent quarterback, and I think he was um, for who he is. And, uh, you know, rushing the passer in those scenarios and making him really work and, you know, get scared basically, I think was the right call. Yeah, I and mean, the K-State defensive line ultimately was, was the difference in that game. And then we get to the second half, K-State uh, forces a punt right away. The defense <laughs> gets going right away, you get the insertion back in the lineup with Daniel Green, who's – who sat on the sideline with sweats on instead of, you know, his full uniforms. So he didn't get all sweaty is what Kleiman said, you know, <laughs> um, after the game, which I get it. I mean, cause you can't even, you know, some coaches might be like, Oh, Daniel Green, you're in the doghouse for this. You're wearing pads. You might not even play second half. But Kleiman's like, no, you played great against Stanford. That targeting may have been a targeting, but we're still going to give you, um, you know, the best opportunity to be successful in the second half. And we also need you. You're one of our best players on defense. Yeah, and you can say, well, does it really matter if he's in sweats or pads? Does that really help him keep, keep him fresher? But I love that they are thinking of those details and looking for any angle to, to help themselves. Absolutely. And then uh, we get K-State's first field goal of the game. 
um, you know, on a 14 play 66 yard drive um, that finished with 738 left in the third quarter. Uh, Will Howard did a good job going from the K State 18 down to the Saluki 16, and then Tate Winkle knocked in a 34 yard field goal. Yeah, that drive um, eased my nerves some. I thought, okay, that's going to settle, settle Howard in. That'll settle the offense in, and and we'll go up and put up another couple scores in the second half, and and not have it be a nail biter. I mean, I believe so. That was a 12 play drive. You said 13 play drive and 14 12, play, 66 yards. Yeah, and I believe all but one of those plays were running plays. So the the offensive line did come out and and exert themselves, which you like to see against an opponent like Southern Illinois. So certainly after that drive, I thought, okay, things are going to be all right. We'll, we'll settle in a little bit here. Yeah, what do you think about? I mean, obviously you talked about the diamond package before, and I don't know if you saw it a bunch on this drive or not, but I am curious. Um, and even when they do just two back sets, like what do you think about when Deuce is out there lead blocking for Joe Irvin? <laughs> for his size, he does a pretty darn good job of it. I mean, he he knows who he is. He he doesn't certainly try to go take a guy up high. He's diving for those ankles and those knees. But so far, he he's been been fairly effective. And I do have them with um, being in that diamond formation on two plays of that drive. A uh, one Howard kept on the second play of that drive for seven yards. And on the second one uh, was a handoff to Charcadia Wright for a nine-yard gain. So all, all three backs, Irvin, Vaughn, and Wright, did get carries on that drive. So despite Southern Illinois knowing they were going to run the football, they did a good job of keeping them off balance by being diverse in the running attack. And, I mean, yeah, I want to you know, be honest. What do you think? Is this maybe Wright's best game ever? Limited time, but – I thought when he got the ball in his hands, we saw him make the right reads. He ran to the right places, and he ran hard. No, I certainly do. Spawn deserves all the touches he gets, but I, and especially now, if Skyler's going to be out for an extended time, it will be important for them to find different ways to be diverse and not to beat a dead horse, but one of those ways is to get other guys um, the football in the running game. So, um, I mean, Malik Knowles had, had a, had a run on that drive so four or no five five different players ran the football on that on that drive so again you know when everyone thinks about being diverse on offense or being balanced on offense it's usually you know running plays versus passing plays which is certainly certainly plays a big role but you also have to be diverse when you do run the football absolutely um so then that next play was that the next play they it, they um Stop SIU on downs near the middle of the field, but then K State was unable to move the the ball in five plays. Only got five yards and then punched it away. How frustrating was that? That that drive and then the the drive after Dana Green's fumble recovery were <coughs> sorry were were two hard drives drives to watch that, that the defense handed handed the offense the ball in prime position and to come out come away with zero points on those two drives was was a point where you kind of felt like uh oh we've had our chance to put them away and now we're you know one one blessed play away on defense and then picking up a big game and big gain and winning this game yeah I mean it's really unfortunate when you do believe Scott would if Scott Thompson doesn't go down with injury this is this is likely a blowout affair and we're all feeling cheery about everything happening um, in the next week but the next thing um, the next thing you know I mean Will Howard's just not making the right plays and things aren't looking great as far as that goes and then um, it's just a lot of a lot of questioning what's going to be the future under center at this point Um, but Will Howard you know does end up punting. They punt again, you know, after a missed field goal for the Salukis on an eight-play, 50-yard drive. Uh, luckily, that the kicker missed a 47-yard field goal. But the next play for K-State was a four-play, 13-yard drive with a punt. Um, and then you did mention the Daniel Green, you know, the next drive was that fumble where Daniel Green set him up in great position. and 
you have to go for a field goal, which ends up being missed by Tate Winkle, like you said. But we do have someone to bring in um, who happens to – obviously, Jimmy. We, we told you earlier he's going to join us, and here he is. Excited to have him on. Um, Jimmy, we are kind of into the third quarter, I believe. I'm not – yeah, we're into the end of the third quarter. Um, so, first of all – Let's just let's just back this up a little bit. Let's let's pick your brain about your feelings about when Skylar Thompson went down with injury. Yeah, that was it was hard to see him, especially drop like that, especially in a situation where he didn't have any contact. Um, I I was watching him carry out his fake, and then I saw Deuce cut back because he was going left, and he cuts back to the right, and then. Skyler's kind of running with him, and then all of a sudden you see him pull up. His leg goes up, and he's 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 down on the ground. And it was tough to see the reaction from the sideline because you knew when something like that happens, usually you're thinking the worst case scenario, especially when a guy starts looking at his knee. The trainer started looking at his knee, and yeah, that was that was tough, and it was just deflating. You could hear that, you could feel the air go out of the stadium, and the the crowd just reaction was bad and the player's reaction and then you know him carried off the field the two guys and barely putting weight on it was was tough to see as well so there's just a lot you feel for the guy that has worked hard it's a six year he's come back and I'm sure you guys mentioned a lot of this stuff man that was that was rough to see yeah it was rough um and it didn't help that Will Howard didn't really ease our uh, ease our minds either but I guess before we jump back into where we're at is there anything statistical-wise that you wanted to bring up from the first half, maybe while Skyler was playing, compared to when Will Howard has inserted um, formations and whatnot, and just your overall thoughts from that first half? Yeah, well, it's funny. I, I must have got caught up because I was re-watching the first half while you guys had started. I somehow missed <laughs> a notification on my – on my uh, that you guys had started. And uh, I, honestly, I was watching those first three – the first four drives, the one was one one play interception from Skyler, but the play calling in that that series in the the different formations we were using personnel groups, it was honestly some of the best play calling personnel motion movement uh, shifting that I've seen from Messingham in a game this far. I know it's only. Uh, you know, a pretty good FCS team with a maybe an average FCS defense, but I was really I've been really impressed just watching so far. I haven't got to the ugly part of the game yet, <laughs> but uh, in the rewatch, but just really impressive the way they were going early. Um, even I think I think the play call uh, on the the Thompson interception was a good. I like taking a shot, doing play action right off off the bat, um, probably a throw. Skyler again deep ball down the middle and he throws it kind of short. If he overthrows it, we're probably okay. And, and Brooks might be able to beat the guy that was behind him. There was no safety over the top. So anyway, that was really the only black, bad, really bad play in those first four drives. And uh, it's just perplexing that it went south and, you know, you just can't have three drives in a row that ends with turnovers. I'm sure you talked about, you know, fumble, um, interception fumble and and I know we we like to say Howard is injury prone that the last fumble is hard for me uh, to get too much on him because because uh, uh, the center just got absolutely whooped and Thompson was I think looking like he was getting ready to throw and could not anticipate getting hit like that when it looked like he had good protection around him so yeah that that was that was tough seeing those interceptions just or this turnovers back to back to back in a span of like 12 plays that's that's hard to overcome for any football team yeah you go from 21 3 to 23 to 21 uh, down 23 to 21 um, going into half really deflating stuff to see you know as a K-State you know fan but I guess um, going into that third quarter we're talking about you know the deficiencies well I guess we didn't even really mention that we talked a lot about how good this defense was, and what we, we did mention too how there's a bunch of you know punts, field goals, punts, 
the defense sets you up perfectly, missed field goal. How frustrating is that third quarter? Again. <laughs> yeah, it was – you know, honestly, the first drive was not too bad. Moved the ball pretty decent and got the, the field goal yeah. to take the lead back. <clears throat> the, the next few were – the next two drives after that were frustrating. <laughs> you had two 10-yard gains in there and then a bunch of kind of mediocre plays and couldn't, couldn't move the chains more than once in each of those drives, which is frustrating to see. And then uh, the, the most frustrating I'm sure you're getting to is the, is the, you know, you get the ball at the nine yard line and you've had success all day with your run game off of jet and read action with the quarterback in the gun. And then you decide to go under center. And I think maybe there was a mentality point there where they're trying to say, we're going to go into the center and just stuff it down their throat from the nine yard line. Well, it didn't work. And when that goes bad and then your kicker just shanks it um, and you don't get any points with the ball at your own, with, at their nine yard line, that was, that was the toughest point for me is that they did not get anything from that and didn't punch it in the end zone for sure uh, in that situation when you got all the momentum, but credit, you know, Southern Illinois for stepping up defensively and, you know, they, they started getting penetration. Yeah, during that stretch, I, I, w- I, would di- I did go back and watch a few of those plays there. You know, K-State tried to do some different things. They tried to run an outside screen to Vaughn. It looked like it was set up well. Again, uh, Southern Illinois defender peels off and makes a play. A few little things like that. You have a nice seven or eight-yard gain on first down on one of those drives that you get called back because you're a legal formation. Although, watching that clip, I, they said we had five in the backfield. I don't know. I, it looked like Knowles was breaking the belt on the line of scrimmage to me. But, you know, that's that's a technicality. you got to make sure you're on the line of scrimmage there for sure. So and that puts you in first and 15, and you don't want to do that with a, with a young quarterback that's gone through some struggles for a while. So that's that's what I saw in that series in the third quarter. All right, you know, let's, let's talk about the, the – um, uh, let's see. Let's talk about the touchdown drive, you know, before the end of the game, and then we talk about more big-picture stuff and going forward. And, uh, you know, any other stats or formations that we want to point out from this game. But, you know, that drive was a seven-play, 59-yard drive. That was after, you know, because we talked about the fumble, uh, missed field goal, then – it was another three and out for the Salukis. Then it was this K-State touchdown drive that we're on um, that finished with 319 left to play and put K-State up uh, 31 to 23. Um, take me through that drive, Nelly. What did you think you saw there? You are, you're, you're, you're muted, just so you know. Just so you know. Sorry Give me about that. Same that. Energy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I thought, you know, here we go again because first play of the drive um, was a, a no yard or a run to Vaughn for no gain. Second play was an incomplete pass to Deuce. So we're sitting there at third and 10. I'm thinking there's very, very little chance we're going to complete this and we're going to give them yet another opportunity. And lo and behold, um, and Will Howard made a really good throw um, to Phillip Brooks for 21-yard gain over the middle. And then Joe Urban probably had his best run of the night where he not only showed some quicks, but showed some power and, and drugged the pow and credit to the O-line for getting downfield as well to push the pow, um, followed by another 16 by, from Deuce. And so, yeah, it was good. Certainly a lot of bad from that offense between the first drive of the second half and that last drive. But when they needed it most, they, they were able to get it. And then – Fan, if you want to talk more about that drive, you can. But I'm going to just move on to the next drive where case because you know this is basically the end of the game, so we can talk about whatever we want after this. But that was where uh, K State's defense continued to play really well, and Felix Anaduke to end the game forces a fumble when the Salukis are driving. They're making things interesting, um, but it's a first and ten on K State's 21. Felix Anaduke gets his third sack of the game, second strip sack, and ends the game right there. Um, how amazing. I mean, talk about that drive and stuff, but how also amazing was Felix and Duke in, in UDK this game for the youngster to come out here, two strip sacks and three sacks, 
for any K-Stater, that's, that's really good stuff. When's the last time we've even seen that? Yeah, that, that was definitely huge. And, I, you know, I know we were talking in the booth that at the beginning of that drive, he wasn't even on the field yet. And uh, we got kind of lucky with uh, – I can't remember if it was a penalty or something happened that allowed us to get him back in the game. McPherson injury. Uh, oh, McPherson's injury, yeah. That allowed him to come back in the game. That was kind of a big deal. It's almost – you don't want the person to get hurt, but it's almost was a good thing because, you know, with, he may not have been on the field at that situation without that injury because they were just going no huddle quick, you know, not, not subbing anybody in and out. But, you know, there's just amazing play to come, to come from behind, get the ball out, um, get it recovered by – I can't remember. Who, who recovered that? Do you guys remember? Timmy Horn, it says, online. Timmy Horn, yeah. Yeah. So, big play. Defense has stepped up and made big plays throughout the second half and, and really you know I even go back to that you know you probably talked about this but even that even though there was only a minute left before halftime that stop at the and keeping them from get, even getting a field goal right before halftime to me was pretty big just for momentum's sake uh, to slow them down a little bit as well so defense had just a, a really good string I think it was seven possessions in a row where they kept uh, SIU scoreless after you know, the, the couple of drives they had in the second quarter and uh, finished it on a high note with, with another uh, turnover, which, you know, they in, ended up even, almost even an up turnover battle, ended up being four to three, and uh, K-State made plays when they needed to. So at this point, the defense is rolling. They played well against K, uh, Stanford. They played well against Southern Illinois. Nelly, um, they need a game manager. They need someone that's not going to turn it over. Can Will Howard be that? Um, that's to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, based, based on historical performance, the answer is no, but mm -hmm. you never know. <laughs> that's why you play the game. So um, it is still early in his career, no doubt about that. But he certainly needs to grow up, and he needs to grow up fast, and his quarterback coach needs to help him grow up. Jimmy, I want to ask you um, – you know, like, is it as simple as he just needs to make better decisions and be more accurate? Is there more to it? What What are your thoughts on all this? Yeah, it's it's puzzling because of, you know, everything that's been said about him and, honestly, how good he's looked. The first full drive he had, he made a lot of really good plays. You know, you had a big third down throw on that drive, 21-yard play to Landry Weber that I'm sure you talked about that was not an – Easy play. He made a great decision on a scramble. Um, made a nice run on a quarterback run to get a first down. And in general, I thought he played really well the first drive he was in the game. And then, you know, kind of mistakes started to happen. And I don't, you know, I don't know if a couple of those throws he was amped up or, you know, just try to do something um, that he shouldn't do. It, it is kind of funny that, uh, D.Y., and I think you were up there, Flando, we were talking about how Skyler always rolls to the right or scrambles yep. to the right. And Will oh, Howard yeah, seems to always scramble to the left, which is odd to see. Um, and, you know, and he seems to try to get his feet set on those throws. Uh, but, but they do kind of lead to maybe some taking some chances. And it almost seems in a way that Howard is almost the opposite in a little bit of what, uh, Kleiman and Meskam have both talked about um, – they even talked about last week they weren't upset with Thompson's interception on that corner route because he tried to – took a chance, and they want him to take more risks and not just be risk-averse as a quarterback, whereas I think Will Howard maybe tries to take a few more of those risks uh, and, and make some mistakes while doing so. And so finding that balance of, of how do you rein in that mentality of a kid that does want to go make a play – but maybe can't make all the plays he thinks he can make. And, uh, you know, that's partially game plan and partially the calls you make while he's in the game. And it's just partially coaching him up to, uh, to make better decisions. So that dynamic of, of, of how that looks with a week with him, you know, I think Kleiman has even said he was getting, what, a third of the snaps, I think maybe a quarter to a third of the snaps yeah. Yeah. in the preseason. So it's not like he hasn't been getting some significant reps, but you know, obviously now he's going to be getting 
two thirds or more of the snaps this week. Um, so the key is, is going to be, is that going to make any difference and, and is making your game plan build around him? Cause I know coaches like to say, well, we didn't change a thing when this guy comes in and, and honestly, that's, that, that can't be true. There's got to be things they know they can do with Skylar compared to Will Howard. And so figuring out all those dynamics will be the challenge for mess game and climbing this week and, and Klein as they, approach a, a pretty good opponent in Nevada. Hey, Nelly, do you have any more numbers? I don't remember if you got to all your numbers under center and not under center from this game. Maybe you have. If not, we can talk about something else. No, I briefly touched on it earlier, but um, I, I did want to expand on that a little more. And I 100% agree with Jimmy that I thought Messenham, especially early on, called a really good game using different formation, things like that. I agree 100%. And really the only drive I was critical of from a call, call place or play calling standpoint was that three-play drive after the green fumble recovery where we were under center all three times. Um, I certainly understand the value of, of being able to go under center. You can certainly do some things schematically different in the run game than, than you do out of the gun. Um, and it is a small sample size, but so far in the season um, – K-State has run the ball 14 times when under center this year, and only one of those, again, that the quarterback sneak for the touchdown was someone un other than the running back running the football. And on those 13 carries, the running backs are averaging 3.8 per carry. Whereas when, when K-State's been in the shotgun, um, they've had quarterback run games 16% of the time, wide receivers have run it 7% of the time, and then the running backs have ran it 77% of the time for 6.3 yards per carry. So, again, we're only two games in, but um, to this point, k success on the ground has overwhelmingly been out of the shotgun and not went under center. So at that point in the game, when that being such an important drive, that was frustrating to see them go back under center at that point in the game. And, Jimmy, this is where I want to give you a chance to, you know, throw out any numbers that we've missed before I give you guys really one more big-picture question and then maybe wrap it up unless there's anything else we need to cover that I can think of. But, yes, Jimmy, you, you have the floor for whatever, whatever else you want to add on to Nelly's numbers. Yeah, just to add on, um, there was a lot of a lot of good things off of you know, inside zone, which is almost all shotgun uh, stuff that we ran. And it's, it's usually going to be off zone read, look, with the quarterback or off our jet action with the receiver. Um, and K-State was really good there. I had, had him down as, at 20 snaps for 116 yards and a two-thirds success rate on those snaps of inside zone off of either jet or zone read. And, and that's really – you can't ask for – even against an FCS opponent, you can't ask for much better efficiency on offense than that. Um, the diamond – Formation was really good. Nine snaps, 5.7 yards per play, and uh, another two-third success rate out of the diamond with the three-back gun look. Um, really good stuff out of that. Um, quarterback run, there's only six quarterback runs, and they didn't gain a lot of yards, but they, you know, often were short yardage, like, you know, quarterback sneaks. Technically, I'm counting as a quarterback run. There was a couple of third-down quarterback runs where Will Howard got first down, so – Quarterback run was pretty good, uh, uh, two-thirds success rate, only 3.2 yards per play. But like I said, that was partially by design. Um, and then a little bit more power this week than we, we saw in the past. Um, had us down for seven snaps. Um, a lot of those were a couple inside power, you know, kind of a fold play. Maybe some people might call it sort of like a trap. And then, you know, some counter tray where we're pulling two guys out off tackle. Was, was really good uh, at a 70% success rate on those. Again, a couple of those were shorter gains, so they didn't have a huge yards per play. So just lots of diversity in the run game and lots of success in each diverse part we try to do, you know, even our stretch jet stuff. Success rate wasn't quite as good, but it did gain 60 yards on 13 snaps for about 46% success rate. So, you know, I anytime I see – that many different snaps, that many different uh, schemes and, and success. That, that really speaks well. You just got to find a way to make your passing game more efficient. It really wasn't in this game, especially after, especially after Thompson went out. 
I got two more questions for each of you. First one, back to the defense, back to, you know, a really positive side of the ball. How much credit, first of all, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, like, pretty good players on that side of the ball based on what we've seen um, through two games. But how much credit should we be given, giving Joe Klanderman and his ability to play call, um, and especially with a different lineup? I'll let Nelly. Nelly, start with this question. Um, is it with a different formation than what they were doing last year? It just seems like this defense was comfortable right away. I, I do think, number one, it takes some guts um, to, to change to a defense that you've probably never coached before in your career, neither Clamon or, or Klanderman. So just, just off the top, I think for a lot of coaches, that's something really, really, really hard to do is to – um, especially for Clement, who's coached as long as he has, to say, okay, we're going to go away from what we know and, and try something different. So, so kudos for them to be willing to do that. Um, and, I, you know, I do think Klenerman being on the field probably does help him um, get, get a better feel for the game. For, you know, for some reason, you know, some coaches, you know, when you're up in the box, um, while you can maybe see the field better and, like he said, can be more analytical, you just don't have that same feel for, for your players as you do when you're down there. So I think that's had a positive impact as well. And then, I mean, same thing for you, Jimmy. I, I, does, does Joe Klanderman get enough credit? I mean, obviously we just started the season, so it's really too early to really be giving credit out really anywhere, but he should be giving credit, I think, through two games. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's credit to be – to be uh, put on this coaching staff and specifically Klanderman. Usually when you make um, a switch like this, you're going to have some mistakes, some alignment mistakes or assignment mistakes that lead to big plays. And Southern Illinois had one play over 20 yards on the day, and they averaged 10 yards per snap the week before. I know they only played uh, Southeast Missouri State, but still to take a team that averaged 10 yards per snap and then hold them to four yards of care, four yards per play the next week, and and give up one play that only was was over twenty yards, is really in my in my mind an impressive feat, especially with the amount of different stuff Southern Illinois does. We talked about during the game, Lando, is, is they were really creative on offense, do a bunch of different things, move people around, lots of different formations, unbalanced stuff, sort of like we do, and uh, to to not have guys misaligned. Or, or miss an assignment over the course of game. Because that's usually often what leads to those 50, 60-yard chunk plays is, is a mistake by a defender. And we haven't seen that from this group. And that's, that's a real credit to this coaching staff, getting these guys coached up. Because um, at the end of last year, with all the personnel changes, we did see a lot of those assignment alignment errors that led to big chunk plays, especially against Texas. And uh, to get a lot of those things corrected, um, has, has been pretty impressive for me to watch, especially against two pretty good. I mean, you know, obviously Stanford wasn't a slouch if they just went and rocked USC the way they did. And Southern Illinois is a pretty darn good offensive team with uh, will probably be one of the better offenses in FCS this year. So I'm pretty impressed. Um, I, I wouldn't quite go f so far to say the lynch mob is back, but um, they're, they're making steps toward that, that goal. And now they're about to start facing some teams that they probably see more of that in practice than they're used to going against, you know, these two teams, like you said, Stanford, um, a little different offense, and then uh, Southern Illinois, unique um, in how they form formations and stuff they do. But now they're going to go against a Nevada team, an Oklahoma State team, an Oklahoma team, an Iowa State team the next four weeks, which is very daunting. Well, for the defense, at least – this is a defense that that or an offense that they've seen in practice and what they've kind of been preparing for. But offensively, a Skylar Thompson injury couldn't come at the worst time. Just take me through all that, Nelly, and then fan finish this off. And that's really the last question I got is how concerning is it? We're going into the toughest part of the season all of a sudden without the starting quarterback. But can we rally around this defense enough? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, their plan moving forward offensively. You know, it's – and I think I touched on this this last season. Um, 
you know, obviously when you're playing a younger quarterback, a guy you may not have complete trust in, um, you know, you want to stay ahead of the change. You don't want to get an unfavorable down a distance, which can lead to more first down running plays. But at the same time, you want to set him up for success and only asking him to throw on third and longs isn't setting him up for success. So some of those early first down throws can, can be the easiest surge you can, you can give a young quarterback. So finding that balance on first down on, okay, how do we stay ahead of the chains, but also give Will Howard some easy throws on first down to gain confidence and to keep the defense honest um, will, will be something I'll be watching, um, you know, over these next few weeks. Same thing to you, Jimmy. Finish us off, and um, if there's anything else either of you want to add, do so before, you know, I tell everyone to tell their friends. Yeah, uh, I just echo a lot of what Nelly said is is finding that balance to 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 allow Howard to throw the ball a little bit because they, they aren't going to be able to be quite as one-dimensional as they were. They ended up for the game 66% run, I think, two-thirds run, and it was it was more than that when Howard came in. So. Um, you may not be 50-50, but you got to be more like 55-45 or 60-40 at the worst as far as how much you're going to run the ball. Um, I do like that we have a lot of different ways we can run it and uh, a lot of different wrinkles in, in what we, we showed this past week and that we can show. Um, Nevada's defense is not great either. I mean, um, they're probably better than Southern Illinois, but they're not a dominant defense by any means. They're an offensive team, so there should be some success to be had um, as, as we look as we look at what we can do moving forward. And then just you know figuring out where Will Howard is at as a quarterback right now. Obviously, he's he's got much more under his belt than he did last year at this time, when you know he barely had a fall season, let alone no spring. New guy. So this is a guy that's had an off season. You should start to see some some improvement, better decision making moving forward from him, as we as we get into uh, these weeks and and you know as he gets a full week of prep as the guy. So, you know, I I think I understand why fans are really concerned and upset and, um, but but I'm not ready to 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 write him off completely yet. At at the same token, or make some of the comparisons I've seen, as well Howard, the worst quarterback since whoever somebody wants to name. <laughs> I think that's a little bit premature based on what we've seen. Now, the, although, you know, if, if, if I read Twitter and message boards, we have some guys that should be quarterback coaches in the NFL, the way they analyze this guy. Um, so I, I'm just going to say that and throw it out there because some people are going way too far with their live watching of a game or watching film from a television broadcast that doesn't show you everything you need to know. I'm just going to say it that way. Absolutely. And, and the context is this guy's been hyped up by this staff. Why would they not continue that confidence and make themselves – it's all around. Even if they didn't have confidence in the offseason in Howard, Kleiman is still going to say, no, we still have confidence in him. That's what you do as a coach. You have to instill confidence. Um, and I think you just kind of have to give him another chance. I agree. Who knows? Things could be different with the whole week of game planning as a starter. Um, he could be more comfortable. He has, um, you know, a whole almost a whole year last year under his belt, and now, you know, a really poor game yesterday. Yes, it doesn't make us think, oh, everything's going to be fine and dandy going forward. But you shouldn't just totally close out the idea that this guy can't turn it around still, get through the adversity, um, because I won't be totally shocked if he does. Sure, I'm not expecting it at this point, but they're going to at least give him the shot against Nevada. And if he performs well, then I think, you know, K-State honestly could be just fine. Maybe that won't mean eight, nine wins this year, but going forward, K-State could be just fine. Yeah, I would agree with that. We'll see what happens. That's, that's all we can do at this point. And that, the other thing is the way he beat out Jaron Lewis last year, and you know hasn't hasn't really looked back since and no one else threatened to even play last year when Will Howard was you know a, a freshman without any experience shows me that the staff sees something I mean I don't know what it is and, and maybe they're making a mistake but they definitely see something in the guy that 
that they think he can play at this level. And and in the past, the staff has made decent decisions on quarterback. So um, we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully uh, he makes a big rebound this week and, and leads us to a good win over Nevada team. Well, you wish you wish you could guarantee oh Rubley or Lewis would be ready to go, but that's all assumption too. You might put yeah. Rubley Lewis in there, and they might crash and burn just as much or even more than Howard has in his career so far. Um, but Howard has the experience. I think he's for sure the guy you go with against Nevada. It'll be you know hopefully exciting to see him progress, or if not, hopefully the staff does make the decision at some point to go a different route or at least try something different. Still try to get Howard going in the running game, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of different things you could do. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be interesting to see for sure. As always, I appreciate the time. Nelly fan, always um, go follow them on Twitter, uh, KSO underscore Nelson for Chris Nelson and K, uh, KSU underscore fan for Jimmy Goheen. So I really always appreciate the time. These guys are great. They know a lot. And I hope everyone enjoys listening to this. It was after a K-State win. May not have been the sweetest, but we still have more football to go. And they're 2-0. Right, guys? That's right. They we'll are. 2-0. We'll tell your friends, and we out.